possible. I want to get to 500 subscribers by the end of this month. That's a goal and you guys can make that happen. So let's do this guys. Let's make it happen. Let's get this channel to 500 subscribers by the end of the month. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for your support and continue viewership. I love you guys. You guys are all awesome. You guys are all watching my videos. There's a lot of positive responses. If you haven't watched part one for this video, please check that out. At the end of this, I'll put a link. Uh, as well as all the other videos that are related to playful keeping and breeding in my channel. Uh, what's going on everybody? How to get your Playcos to be more active? This is part two. You guys are really great. We got a really good response on part one. So I'm really happy for that and uh, this is my thank you and this is part two of that video. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe down below. We're almost at 400 subscribers so thank you so much for everybody that has subscribed. And uh, let's get it to 450 subscribers as soon as possible. So subscribe down below, hit that notification icon and watch the video till the end where I, I reveal one of the really uh, cool tricks that I have that gets uh, I use to get my wild card play coast to be active. Now on this video, uh, part two, we're gonna cover things that you can do to get your wild card fish uh, to be more active. Sometimes, a lot of times actually, aside from uh, your zebra play coast and your super reds and uh, your L236 uh, line bread varieties, a lot of play coast you might get are, are gonna be caught wild. Uh, so these animals are gonna be captured in a river system, gone through extensive shipping, uh, they're gonna be very stressed by the time they get to your tank. What can you do to get these fish to be more active? Now tip number one I'm gonna give you is gonna be uh, somewhat of like, uh, I guess more, more or less uh, common sense type of tip, but a lot of people don't seem to understand this. So I'm gonna say it anyways. So tip number one is you gotta give time to these animals, for these animals. And they've gone through a lot of tremendous amounts of stress, especially in the case of wild caught animals. They've been caught out of a river, um, kept in little tubs for days at a time, with like several water changes every day with the river water. No air hoses, no tanks, nothing. Two, three inches of water, sometimes a couple of centimeters of water in the terms of like flat fish, because it's easier to keep them a lot of them stacked up. You should, you should see how these animals are collected. It's so stressful for the animal. A lot of them die in the process. Then they go to a, um, a wholesaler. Um, the wholesaler in, in South America, in this case, uh, would have these animals in tanks, uh, wouldn't feed them a nutritious diet. Their main concern is to get them to you as soon as possible. Their primary concern is not the long-term health of these animals. So they're going to be often malnutritious. Uh, you know, cat pick up diseases, uh, stress, internal parasites, all these things. And then you're going to bring, somebody else is going to bring them to your country like a transship or an importer. They're going to be in quarantine there, in glass tanks, in large amounts, piled up together, caught in nets, then moved to fish tanks in pet stores or however. Then you end up getting them, bringing them home, going through a lot of these uh, quarantine procedures if you're doing it right, which you have to do, especially with wild caught fish. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. We are going through a global pandemic because our governments don't understand this principle which should be applied in every sense in life. Quarantine. When you are bringing anything from outside, you have to quarantine it. Uh, so however you do that is up to you. We'll make separate videos. There's videos on the channel about it. Check those out. I'll make another video about how I quarantine Playcos, what I do. Uh, so subscribe for that. Uh, but yes, so you do all this then you put it into a tank uh, and you expect this animal to start feeling normal again uh, Good luck, buddy. Give it a few months um, so My recommendation is at least five or six months of this animal being in your setup in a naturalistic environment with adequate size tank Lots of wood, hiding places. If it's a wood-eating animal, it's really good to have a lot of wood in there. Uh, it's going to provide hiding places for the animal as well as a, well as a secondary food source. Um, I'm not saying to feed your animal just wood or cucumbers. i seen somebody throw mushrooms into their tank and said, oh my god, success. If it wasn't a success, you'd have a dead tank full of dead pleco. So don't do that. Feed an adequate, uh, specific food for your type of fish. Research what type of fish it is what they eat, what their requirements are, like go through different sources, find out what different people feed them, what has worked, what hasn't worked, ask a lot of questions. YouTube is a really good tool for that, so do all that, right? Having done all that, you have this animal in the tank, 
it's not going to come out for a few months because it's stressed. It's gone through tremendous amounts of stress to get here. Okay, so give it some time. Um, that's something you really have to, you know, it's just when the animal feels more comfortable and feels like its life is not in danger, it will come out. Simple. Okay, step, so that's, uh, I guess, uh, rule number one. Uh, trick number two or whatever, uh, uh, rule number, trick number two, I guess. Uh, I guess uh, some of these animals, this is also kind of a, common uh, knowledge thing which a lot of people don't seem to understand so I'm going to also say this one which is some of these animals like my Rhine Lower Carrier for example are nocturnal I find them to be a lot more active at night they do a lot of their activities later uh, once the lights are off so whatever time that is once the lights go off that's when they come out even in the most natural environments if the animal is a nocturnal animal they're not going to come out um, like, so I, when I do see my Rhine Lorry Carrier Lancelotta, for example, my uh, Lance, Lancelotta Whiptails, uh, they would be out and about, uh, especially hiding amongst the leaves and plants and stuff throughout the day. And then very rarely would they come out onto the sand bed during the day. I do see them here and there when I'm feeding the tank and stuff like that, but they usually try to stay in the back, hide and, and eat. But during the nighttime when the lights are off, they're always out. I see them on the glass. I see them swimming about. They also spawn at night. I've caught them spawning several times now. I have uh, gotten three clutches of eggs. My male is sitting on a clutch of eggs right now um, in a cave, uh, in a breeder box actually. And uh, that happened overnight. So I think they're predominantly nocturnal animals. I mean, am I 100% right on that? I don't know. But my experience so far with these particular species has been that they're nocturnal. Now my Rhine Lorry Carrier uh, L010A Red Lizard Catfish. Uh, they are definitely more active at night than they are during the day. They are active during the day. Um, but again, like right now the lights are on. It's like almost, past, it's a little past midnight. It's so almost one o'clock actually. The lights are about to go off. And there's no activity in the tank. If I look in there, no, I don't, I don't see no red lizard catfish. My male is sitting in a cave and my three females are hiding under, on the slates or inside the plant. When I put food, they come out because they're more com comfortable, they're tank raised, they're tank bred, all four of them actually uh, are tank bred. And uh, they come out and they do their thing, they're very uh, comfortable with me and uh, they do, uh, they are more active during the daytime when there's food available. But when there's no food available, they, out, they go and, and rest. But at night, they're always swimming about, I catch them on the glass, I catch them uh, swimming on the water surface where there's leaves and stuff, they will go sit on leaves, uh, they'll sit on the water current. Uh, they'll try to like go into the bubbles and stuff. They, they'll play in the bubbles. They'll do all kinds of cool stuff at night. Now, I never see this activity during the daytime. They're always just either eating or hiding. Uh, so, I fully believe that these are nocturnal animals. So, if you do have a nocturnal species, they're not going to come out during the daytime. So, um, a good thing to remember, this is something one of my friends does. Um, he has a, a nightlight cameras. Uh, also another breeder I know actually, I, it's really amazing because he has uh, these uh, night camera, night vision cameras set up right in front of his uh, zebra pleco tank. So this is a breeder I know and, uh, and uh, he films his zebra pleco spawning at night and, uh, and his L236 super whites. So really cool idea, really cool to do. Uh, I really recommend you guys to try that. I don't have uh, night vision cameras on my tanks. Uh, I just flashlight and check every night or you know when the lights come on. Um, but that's something to consider. Uh, so if you have nocturnal animals and you want to see them, set up a camera. Uh, what I do uh, actually is to set up my camera with, uh, you know, because it records, you know, with minimal light. And there's some lights still on at night uh, when the main lights go off in the room. Because uh, I don't like to keep the room in complete darkness. Um, you know, there's points when the lights are, all the lights are off, like at like 7 o'clock in the morning or something. Uh, but then there's night, uh, light, a little bit of light coming through the skylight and stuff, so it balances out. My point is, um, they come out at night and I film them with my camera and, to the best of my ability. Uh, so, I don't actually have b-roll that I can show you guys, it's not really good footage or anything. Just to see what the fish are doing, you know? Uh, I'm curious. So, night vision is a really cool idea, a really cool tip. Uh, so that's, I guess, tip number three. Um, having said that, this is going to be tip number four, which is a really useful tip that I use quite a bit. Uh, thank you so much for watching till the, this far into the video. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know, what are you waiting for? Christmas? That's like eight months away, my friends. Subscribe now. 
and uh, you know catch up on all the videos that I have uploaded for you guys and stay tuned for all the new videos coming out and uh, here it is tip number four so for everybody that's waited this far uh, I use common animals that I have that I breed here myself uh, to get my wild caught fish to be more active uh, what do I mean so I, I breed super reds um, long fin and short fin varieties I have quite a bit of those guys around the fish room and um, anytime I have let's say fish that I want to get to my, to become more comfortable I use a super red or a couple of super reds in their tank so like right now I have a, a group of L56 um, Placos wild caught a group of seven and uh, they were not coming out for a few months and I put in uh, two calico super red growths that I have uh, that I bought actually to to mix with my uh, to my to my groups uh, so I put those two growths which are about two and a half inches three inches now into a into a tank with seven uh, L56 um, gray form that's starting to turn yellow now which are about four four and a half inches long now uh, they were not coming out at all once I put the super reds in they started coming out they started becoming more active uh, they started doing their thing more often and uh, I see them more now and uh, so that really works also uh, I put baby super reds into tanks into breeder boxes with uh, other hype ancestors for example um, to get them to eat and be more comfortable uh, so if I have a group of let's say hype ancestors uh, babies that are growing out uh, and uh, if I want them to be more comfortable for example if I only have two or three in there I put a couple of super red fry that are smaller or equal size into the group into that breeder box and let them grow out together so the super reds will be more outgoing and uh, they will eat the same foods and uh, they will grow up and uh, that would make your hype ancestors which are in the same group feel more comfortable to come out because then they'll see the other little guys the same size and everything they don't feel like they're a threat they are almost the same thing they look, look they're almost the same color uh you know very similar especially if they're the super reds are a little bit smaller great uh if they're the same size it's fine but a little bit smaller works much better especially for fry um so if i have wigglers you know whatever and a new super red spawn happen and there's like eggs that are just getting a little bit of eyes and a tail suck up a couple with the tube put them in there done and uh, that seems to really work so having super reds or common bristle nose or your uh, calicos or whatever l144s any type uh, you know fat common placos uh, that that are small works uh, rubber lip placos I believe would work I, I don't really have experience with them too tough I've kept up one or two in the past but you know not long term uh, so not never got into them um, so not too much experience with the rubber lip placos but my experiences with uh, super reds and other bristle nose types really works well um, so that's tip number four I found out that 75% of my traffic comes from unsubscribed sources so please if you haven't subscribed subscribe down below and hit that notification icon and let's get to the channel into 450 subscribers and to 500 subscribers as soon as possible I want to get to 500 subscribers by the end of this month that's a goal and you guys can make that happen so let's do this guys let's make it happen let's get this channel to 500 subscribers by the end of the month thank you so much for subscribing thank you for your support and continued viewership i love you guys you guys are all awesome you guys are all watching my videos there's a lot of positive responses if you haven't watched part one to this video please check that out at the end of this i'll put a link uh, as well as all the other videos that are related to playco keeping and breeding in my channel um as always thank you for your support i love you all i'll see you on the next video god bless